Hello. For the next several minutes, we're going to look at how Sage Intax purchasing can begin from a flow that could start with a purchase requisition, convert over to a purchase order, if needed, be received, and then finally, the vendor invoice would then be brought into the system and compared with either the purchase order only, a two-way matching, or a three-way matching, which also looks at the receiving of the shipment. Notice also at the top the different data elements that are necessary for the procure to pay process to work. First of all, vendors, the master files. The vendor is a dimension in NTAC, which means that a lot of the reporting tools can be very specific, things such as spending by vendor. Also, you have what's called the item master. The item master uh, is, is a dimension which would allow the spending reports based upon what items were procured. And the item master also drives several other functions, such as how the accounting would work during the procure to pay process. As we look below, though, you'll see things that are a little outside the process, but really are integral to it. One is to be able to have workflow approvals for purchasing transactions. Intact has the capability or the flexibility to place approvals at any of these documents during this flow. Many of the customers using Intact Purchasing today find that putting a workflow on the purchase order is, is what they want. Other customers may want the, the requisition to go through a workflow approval before the purchase order can be um, entered and dispatched. We also have customers that just want to have the, the vendor invoice go through a workflow approval. And then below here you'll see that there's, there's many standard reports, things that let you see uh, vendor exceptions the price list, any receipt history, and you'll see that much of the analysis in purchasing is either out of the box or you'll find over in dashboards. A quick example of a purchasing dashboard is one that includes also inventory. So we can see here by item ID, I can see inventory that's been received, transferred in, transferred out, and quick a glance at just aging grass by vendor. You see in this in this company right now, there's quite a few vendor invoices that are over 121 days old. Along with more physical inventory, and then just by geo account, uh, the type of operating expense uh, where I can see the, the most expenses are incurred uh, from purchasing. Well, let's go through a, a very quick flow. As I mentioned, we can start with a purchase requisition, but we'll start right with creating a purchase order. You'll see the user interface is easy to use. You just click and the transaction opens up for entry. Now the vendor, vendor can be selected by just typing the vendor's name in, such as the supplies and services vendor. Uh, it could be easy uh, picked up by uh, just dropping the list here, and then I'll see that uh, there's a capability to do find and view, and maybe sometimes the purchase order started and there's a realization the vendor hasn't been added yet, and that allows that to occur immediately. Now that I have the vendor, you'll see that the pay to and the ship to from that vendor is brought in from the vendor master, so is the payment terms. Now you'll notice the payment terms are 30 days. So I can change it if I like on the document. So even though it's, it's defined on the vendor master, with the correct authority, a, a procurement officer can change those payment terms. Now for this example, the items, we'll like to begin by picking an item that will go in the inventory. I'll pick some cleaning equipment. There's a reason behind this. It'll show how things can go into inventory during the procurement process, but then we're going to put a second line, and this is going to be for an item that will just simply get expensed, off office supplies. So notice that it can all go into the same purchase order. Now I have the, the different locations that can be chosen, so we'll choose New York. Here's a warehouse. You see how there's no warehouse indicated for the expense, but there is a warehouse now for uh, the item here for the cleaning equipment. Um, um, yeah, the cleaning equipment. We'll just choose a, a, a warehouse here that's near the New York location. Uh, if it's to be charged to a project, that can be done. Department code, let's go ahead and charge that to, as part of our operations. In fact, we'll, we'll put both of those expenditures of that. Here, pricing could have been obtained from the price list for these items. In this case, these items weren't on the price list. So 
We'll place a, a nice uh, round number of $1,000 for the item that's going into inventory and 500 for the item that's to be expensed. At this point, the purchase order has been completed. If there are any taxes, we could calculate any of those subtotals that may, may have been incurred. Now look up here, I see $62.50. And sure enough, you can see that Intax is capable of calculating taxes, not just on one level, but if there are two levels or three, depending on tax jurisdictions, it will make that calculation. Now the, the action above here is called submit. You'll see draft, that means you can always just hold the purchase order before you run it through the workflow. In this example, I'm signed on as a user named Carla Grace. Carla has the authorization to have pre-approval on the purchase orders that uh, she would submit. Now, in the case of approving purchase transactions, you'll see that Carla has many transactions that have come to her uh, for being uh, to be approved, or to even she can partially approve or line item approval on purchase orders. The the approvals, you'll see that there's a under setup. There's approval policies that can be set up for each document. You'll notice the purchase order, the requisition, uh, the vendor invoice. And if we go look now at the purchase order, what we'll notice is that the only rule is, is that Carla Grace would need to be approved. Well, since we are signed on as Carla Grace or Kay Grace, then she was pre-approved. The thing that's notable here, though, is that any time an approval process um, needs to be defined uh, a little bit more specifically, then I can do at a higher level, I can approve these policies to where it's just not an individual. So if I go back to that same item, the purchase order, then you can notice that there are many rule types. So it could be that we need approval based upon the value of it, or maybe the department's being charged. And you'll notice there's several rules. Maybe it's the employee manager. If it's a value approval, then I could have a rule set that says it, uh, multiple steps. If it's up to $1,000, and it needs to be approved by this individual. If it exceeds $10,000, then we could even have a, a second layer of approval defined. Well, now let's go back to purchasing. Notice over to the side here, there are different favorites that have been, sad, that have been saved. The purchase order that was just placed in, the one here at the very top, and you'll notice the word convert. Here's when you're able to decide if this is going to be received, the PO receiver, or would this purchase order really just go straight to a vendor invoice, a two-way? In our case, we'd like to receive it because one of the items on that purchase order uh, is going to um, be need to be received to go into inventory. Now, we'll still receive the second item, but it's more of a desktop receiving, and we'll see the accounting effect of that. But no, it's still, there's only one warehouse that needs to be defined here. Now, let's imagine the quantity of one was received in both cases, and we just simply post that. There is an accounting effect that can occur here. That PO receipt has some definitions behind it. Intact refers to it as a transaction definition. Let's just move through and we'll go back and look and see the effect of that transaction definition. So now that we have the receipt, we'll see that here it is. It will now just speed up time and say, okay, well, the next thing to convert will be the vendor in, 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 invoice. And it, you notice it's a three-way invoice because there is both a PO and a receipt that's going to be compared. The only required field on the vendor invoice is the vendor invoice identifier. So we'll place a number in. And the reason that's required, because Intact is going to take that number and it's going to make sure that with that vendor and on that date, there's not a duplicate invoice in the system. There's also the capability of putting attachments within Intact. So in the case of having a attachment that is scanned, you'll see that if I just go reference my desktop, I've got a, a, a very small example of, of a JPEG file, could be a PDF, and you can drag it and just drop it right into the attachments. That will then save it, we'll give it a unique identifier, press save, and that is a way of digitally taking uh, the vendor invoices, place them in the cloud uh, for intact to store uh, as long as this, this needs to be referenced. Uh, so I still have that calculation of the sales tax. At this point when we post it, we're at the end of the process. We went through a purchase order to a receipt to a vendor invoice. Now let's take a look and see what the effect was. So we go back into that vendor invoice. The first thing to be notice here is that 
there is a history tab here that is now linked to those transactions. There is the invoice, the receipt, the purchase order, any time that any need to be referenced. If we're doing any matching of uh, what was received versus what was invoiced, same with the purchase order. It's a very simple click on the, the link there, and you can see that the related documents show up very clearly. The next thing to note is what happened uh, in the accounting. It's very simple to look at. We click on the general ledger standard report. Well, we'll see that uh, we'll run the report just using today's date. Very simple shortcut for that is a T and a T again. And now we'll view every transaction that occurred today. This report here shows more of the T chart effect. As I scroll downward, we'll notice that, okay, there's an inventory balance that got increased by $1,000. That was the item that was to be placed in the inventory. Now it's on the balance sheet debit. As I scroll down further, we'll finally get to the next transaction and we'll see that well, there's the sales tax that was put into accounts payable because that's to be paid to the vendor along with the, the item to be expensed, that 500 and finally there's that inventory item. So there's a total vendor invoice of the 1562. Now, as we go down to the, to the last portion here, we'll see that the accrual happened automatically. So when the receipt went into the system, you'll see that this receipt liability or this accrual was posted in, but then when the invoice came along, it backed that out. Many systems don't do that. So Intac automates the, the accrual process. Finally, you'll see here the expense of that sales tax along with the office expense, the second line the item on that purchase order, goes directly to an expense account. Well, this concludes our overview of the purchasing process, and I thank you for your time on looking at it with me. Bye-bye.